In this video, we're reviewing how to use courtesy runners under NFHS baseball rules. First, we'll review the rules as they're written in the rules book, and then we'll go through this week's case plays. Now, if you wanna see how well you can do on the case plays, you can find a link to them in the video description. Hey everyone, Patrick Farber here with GHSA Baseball Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires to develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel and you can sign up to receive future rules quizzes in the video description below. So first, let's review where you can find courtesy runner rules in the NFHS rules book. Courtesy runner rules can be found at the end of the rule book under the suggested speed up rules. Now, these suggested speed up rules are different because each state has the option as to whether or not they're going to use these rules. For GHSA umpires, we do use courtesy runner rules, but I do know that there are other states out there that do not, so be sure to check with your umpire leadership about whether or not you actually use this rule. But if you do, let's go ahead and break it down. For the courtesy runner rule, there's seven bullet points in the rules book that make up all the rules that apply to it. So let's start with rule one. At any time, the team at bat may use courtesy runners for the pitcher and or the catcher. In the event that the offensive team bats around, the pitcher and or catcher who had a courtesy runner inserted on their behalf may bat in their normal position in the batting order. Okay, so from this first bullet point, there's actually three things that we need to take away as umpires. First, a courtesy runner can be used at any time. That means from the moment they become a runner all the way until they score or are put out, they can have a courtesy runner put into the game for them. Second is that a courtesy runner can only be used for the catcher and or the pitcher. And third is that if the team bats around, the pitcher or catcher can go back in and have their at bat. Part two. The same individual runner may not be used for both positions, pitcher and catcher, during the game. Now with this, there's going to be two points that we need to come away with. First, an individual courtesy runner can only run for the catcher or for the pitcher, but they can't run for both. That's why on my line of card, I make a table that has CR1 and CR2 separated, and then I can put down the numbers of their courtesy runners under each side so that I keep track of who courtesy runners have run for. Now, the second point of this is note that the courtesy runner has to run for a position, not for a player. This means that if the catcher and the pitcher in the game swap positions, a courtesy runner that had been used previously for the catcher would still only be allowed to run for the new catcher. Part three, neither the pitcher nor the catcher will be required to leave the game under such circumstances. This one is pretty simple. They're never required to use a courtesy runner, and if they do, that doesn't take the pitcher or catcher out of the game. It's just using a courtesy runner. Part four, players who have participated in the game in any other capacity are ineligible to serve as courtesy runners. Easy enough, if they've already played in the game, they can't come in as a courtesy runner. There's a couple reasons for this rule, but one mindset that we should always keep when officiating NFHS baseball is that we're trying to get as many players into the game as possible. So using players that haven't participated yet as a courtesy runner is just another way to get a kid into the game. Part five, a player may not run as a courtesy runner for the pitcher or the catcher and then be used as a substitute for another player in that half inning. If an injury, illness, or ejection occurs and no other runners are available, the courtesy runner may be used as a substitute. Pretty simple here. If a player goes in as a courtesy runner during that inning, they can't be used as a substitute during the same inning. Of course, the exception to this is that if there are literally no other players available, then they can be used as a courtesy, but odds are that's not gonna happen. So keep in mind that a player that's been a courtesy runner in that inning cannot be a substitute in that same inning. Part six. The umpire in chief shall accord courtesy runner participation and also announce it to the scorer. So I already told you how I track courtesy runners on my lineup cards. And it's important that when we have a courtesy runner entering the game, we let the other team know that it is a courtesy runner. If a coach tries to put a courtesy runner into the game without telling us, then that wouldn't be a courtesy runner. It would actually be an unannounced 
substitution. So it's very important that when there is a courtesy runner being used, that that is clearly communicated between the coaches and the umpires. Part seven, a player who violates the courtesy runner rule is considered to be an illegal substitute. Should an injury, illness, or ejection occur to the courtesy runner, another courtesy runner for the pitcher or catcher may run. So the first part here is pretty simple. If they use an illegal courtesy runner, then that would be an illegal substitution. And the second part of this rule is that at any time, if they need to, they can substitute a courtesy runner with another courtesy runner, so long as they use an eligible player to fill that role. Okay, so now that we've reviewed courtesy runners in the rules book, let's go ahead and review this week's case plays. Case play number one. In the top of the fifth inning, CR1 is a courtesy runner for the pitcher. In the fifth inning, CR1 is brought in to courtesy run for the catcher. Is this A, this is always legal? B, this is only legal because it is in a different inning? Or C, this is always illegal? The correct answer here is C, this is always illegal because a courtesy runner throughout the entire game can only run for the pitcher or the catcher. The same player can't courtesy run for both of those roles at any point in the game. Case play number two. Jones runs for F2 in the first inning, but Smith comes out to run for F2 in the third inning. Jones has not yet entered the game in any other capacity and was still able to run for F2. Is this A, this is legal, Smith can now run for F2, or B, this is illegal, Jones must continue to be the courtesy runner. The correct answer here is A, this is legal. A team can use any eligible player on their bench as a courtesy runner as they choose. Case play number three. The coach of team A sends out a courtesy runner for F2 in the third inning with one out. After the second out, he sends F2 back out to run for himself. Is this legal or illegal? The correct answer here is this is illegal. Once the courtesy runner is put out there, they can't have the catcher or pitcher that they're courtesy running for come back in to finish running the bases. They could use another courtesy runner or they could make a substitution, but the original player cannot go back out there. Case play number four. The coach of team B sends out a courtesy runner, Jones, for F1, Smith, in the fifth inning with no outs. In the same half inning, after the offensive team bats around, F1's position to bat comes back up. Who is the proper batter? Is it Smith, Jones, or they must substitute a new batter? The correct answer here is Smith. Smith, because they are in the lineup, will be the proper batter when their position comes back around. Case play number five. When can a courtesy runner be used? A only immediately after F1 or F2 reaches base and before the next pitch, B, only with two outs, or C, at any time. The correct answer here is C. A courtesy runner can be put into the game at any time that the catcher or pitcher is a runner. Case play number six. Herman is a courtesy runner for F2 in the top half of the sixth inning. He then enters the pitch hit for F4 later in that half inning. Is this A, if he is still on the bases, this is illegal because he must finish his time courtesy running. If he is not on the bases, this is legal. B, this is always illegal. Or C, this is always legal, even if he is currently on the bases as a courtesy runner. The correct answer here is B. If they've already been a courtesy runner in that half inning, then they cannot be used as a substitute in the same half inning. Case play number seven. The coach of team A sends out a courtesy runner for F1 and fails to report the change to the umpiring chief. Is this A, the umpire should recognize this runner is for F1 and note it as a courtesy runner? Or B, this is a substitution. The correct answer is B, this is a substitution. We cannot have an unannounced courtesy runner by NFHS rules but we can have an unannounced substitution. So if it's not reported to the umpire as a courtesy runner, then it would by default be an unannounced substitution. Case play number eight. 
F1 singles and is replaced at first by Courtesy Runner. On the next pitch, the Courtesy Runner steals second base and sprains his ankle, but is safe on the slide. What happens next? Is it A, CR1 is out because he cannot finish running the bases, B, CR1 must be replaced by F1, or C, CR1 must be replaced by a legal substitute and cannot be replaced by F1 unless no legal substitutes remain. The correct answer here is C. Since the courtesy runner can no longer participate because of their injury, the team is allowed to bring in a different courtesy runner to take that position. The only requirement being that that new courtesy runner must still be an eligible player to be a courtesy runner. If the team does not have any more players that would meet that requirement, then F1 would be allowed to come back in and finish running the bases for themselves. Case play number nine. Thompson enters the game as the courtesy runner for F2 in the bottom half of the first inning. In the bottom half of the fourth inning, F2 walks. Must Thompson or another player be the courtesy runner for F2? Is the answer A, F2 must use a courtesy runner, B, F2 can run or they can use a courtesy runner, or C, F2 must run because they have used their courtesy runner for the catcher already in the game. The correct answer here is B. The team always has an option as to whether or not they want to use the courtesy runner each time that their pitcher and catcher make it on base. Case play number 10. Adams courtesy runs for F1 Jones in the first inning. Baker courtesy runs for F2 Smith in the third inning. In the fourth inning, Jones and Smith swap defensive positions. Which person can Adams courtesy run for? The correct answer here is Smith. What we need to remember is that a courtesy runner runs specifically for a certain position, not for a specific player. So just because the players change doesn't change who the courtesy runner can run for. They're either listed as being able to run for the pitcher or being able to run for the catcher. Case play number 11. In the top of the first inning, Jones, listed on the lineup as the catcher, reaches base safely. Can he use a courtesy runner? The correct answer here is yes, as long as he is listed as the catcher on the lineup turned into the umpire at the plate meeting, he is able to have a courtesy runner run for him. Adams is the catcher for Team A and is the leadoff in the bottom of the fifth inning. The coach has Smith to pinch hit for him and Smith leads off with a single. Team A requests to use a courtesy runner for Smith. Is this legal or illegal? The correct answer here is this is illegal. Because Smith has not actually played defense yet, they're only a pinch hitter. So even though they might be going in to play catcher, they are not the catcher of record and thus cannot have a courtesy runner put in for them. Case play number 13. Adams is the catcher for team A and is the lead off in the bottom of the fifth inning. The coach has Smith to pinch hit for him. First time in the game, Adams has had a substitute for him. And Smith leads off with a single. The coach re-enters Adams into the game and then requests to have a courtesy runner for Adams. The coach of team B protests this is not legal. The correct answer is this is legal. Since Smith is not the catcher of record from the previous inning, a courtesy runner can't be used for Smith. But if the coach re-enters Adams, well, Adams was the catcher in the last half inning, so Adams is the catcher of record, and thus Adams can have a courtesy runner be used for him. So there you have it, our review of courtesy runners under NFHS baseball rules. If you found this video helpful, be sure to share it with other umpires. And if there's video ideas that you would like to see, be sure to leave those ideas in the video comments. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.